um, Color the Arts. Um, it's been a long time. Um, started in 1998, and um, some of the things we were very keen on doing was um, training the next generation um, in the classical dance form, um, and sort of that was one of the uh, visions of the organization. And um, also taking professional performances so the communities, um, everybody in Hampshire could enjoy watching and learning about it and developing an interest. We had a lot of interest from schools, local schools. Um, so we were training a lot of teachers. Um, we also had um, funding from the Arts Council to develop our first performance that was called The Wheel. Um, and that had a script writer um, and a visual artist and we also had to bring dancers from India for that. Uh, some of the new trustees who had just joined, they were very keen on getting involved um, in the storytelling aspect of it and it connected with their stories because it was a story about how um, the South Asian community moved from India to Africa and then from Africa to this country. Our work went from the performance aspect to schools educations and that was really hit. We were working in so many different um, councils and also we took work to London as well. One of the projects which came along was Tingapali, which was um, a project um, in relation to a particular part in Orissa um, and some of the teachers from Hampshire had been to um, Orissa to learn about the story, it was deforestation. So there were lots of trees being chopped off so they were studying how we can restore some of those trees back, environmental projects, um, and also how they could connect with some of the schools in Hampshire. The school children who had learned with us, some of them would come back to our classes, and their interest was uh, performing. So they would either perform at the Mela, um, as it was happening all over the place, and festivals. Also some of them performed at Trafalgar Square, Diwali events. And they were very impressed to perform. And also um, some of you know, some of the work also took, uh, went to South Bank as well. And then we started um, uh, doing little productions and we were a bit lucky because um, we became the Artistic Associate of Anvil Arts for two years, um, 2010 to 2012. And that, that was also the time um, Color the Arts was developing more work. Um, so we were back into various schools, um, communities, and also we managed to get quite a few professional artists. And then in 2014, Color the Arts started um, dance school. So all our classes and everything started happening at the wine school. Um, the local community was developing an interest for the dance form um, we have or we do and also music as well. So we were able to cater for that. So when we started, we, um, we had a huge demand for the work and eventually it grew and grew and grew. My name is Andy Buchanan. I work behind the scenes helping Sushmita on the kind of planning, management, marketing. And so this has given me a real insight into and a genuine appreciation for Sushmita and what Kala does and achieves. As the former director of Fairwheels and Basistoke, we also hosted many of Kala's classes and performances for many years. I remember Sushmita would bring excellent dancers from India and Europe to work with her and performances and community projects where the dancers also learn from her as well. Another thing I've always admired about Sushmita is her dedication to and long-running perseverance in promoting a Dissi dance as an art form and in giving people a chance to see, learn and understand it, which is very important as it's not so well known in the UK compared to, say, Bharat Natyam or Katak. Kal has always been good at bringing different people together from different communities and backgrounds to appreciate South Asian arts, and it still does this to this day. Delivery and development of various different projects. This includes working on the exciting Odyssey Journey project, a project which, to Kala's immense credit, it succeeded in getting National Lottery Heritage funding for, and which it did as part of its 20-year anniversary. This made me realise how unique Kala's offer is in this part of the UK, and that Kala is much more than a, quote, local dance company, unquote. It's really a cultural ambassador for South Asian arts and particularly Odissi dance in a way which is really unique in the UK and which brings people from all backgrounds to understand and appreciate what Kala does. Um, I really like how we can tell stories 
uh, through like different generations. So it's like a timeless dance. We had seen Color the Arts perform uh, in a number of venues and we were really taken aback by the skill and the, and the rigour and the passion shown by uh, the dancers. Other projects I've worked on have included the amazing Light It Up Diwali Festival programmes we have put on in Basingstoke and in Reading and we're currently working on trying to get funding to put them on again in 2023. These have been amazing projects where Cal has successfully made new partnerships and particularly in Reading. And Cal has really started to get the recognition it deserves and has deserved for quite some time. Uh, I think I think audiences really um, immensely like the whole parade and the whole program. They really enjoyed it um, and I have really had a very positive and a very um, enthusiastic feedback from the audiences. Covid was an interesting time um, because um, all the classes just had shut down. We never knew we could have another avenue of teaching. So we explored and Zoom came along. So Zoom attracted a lot of international people as well because they could join from anywhere they liked. Um, it also gave a sort of a lot of the legends who could not have access to some of our work because we couldn't bring them here. They could go online and we partnered with the Nehru Center and we got a huge following of audiences who wanted to listen to some of these lecture demonstrations. Um, also, the classes continued. We carried on doing a lot of community works and a lot of um, memory projects as well, um, heritage projects. We partnered with some uh, musician, museums, two museums in Reading, and we worked with them for a whole year. And that also produced a Diwali film, Light It Up. So um, we created more partnerships, um, more friendships, and um, I think since the last five years, it has been very, very, um, the work has really grown. Uh, there's a lot of awareness. Um, it's been a bit still slow for more students to join us, but um, I think we, we are still sort of um, quite a popular organization in the region and people who want to have a long-term aspiration of learning the dance form, classical dance forms, they would always come to Color the Arts. What it means for me dancing is very, very deep and very, very personal. Like I said, it brings me great joy and particularly in this pandemic when every single one of us are cooped up within our homes, working, trying to manage uh, our work commitments to our expectations and relationships at home and trying to carve out those few moments of joy everywhere. I found dancing to be a great solace because that's where it's only for myself. And joining me now is a very talented Shishmita Pati, all the way from Basingstoke. Uh, Post COVID, I felt um, how dance is used for mental health, mm -hmm. how young people are sort of, you know, how it's helping the mental health of young people. And I think that that is something Carla and also single parents as well. Now Carla works with a lot of single parents right. and disadvantaged children as well. Um, so that has become something, you know, which sort of has happened in the, in the process. So when, when we started uh, Color the Arts, one of our um, aspirations was also to do regular classes um, for the next generation and also anybody who was interested in the form. Um, we were very attractive to people who were non-Asians. Um, they were very keen to explore the form because they loved the form. What do you see? For them, it appeared very beautiful, very elegant, and also for some very feminine as well. Um, and graceful. So um, we used to run classes at Fairfields Art Centre in the heart of the town in Basingstoke and um, a lot of people would travel from quite far and local sort of you know students they would attend and then then we would actually have a good partnership with Fairfields and we would run two residences one in the spring in the spring season in February in the half term uh, we would also invite some international artists to that it was like a big project for us um, five days of residency and we would have one in the autumn as well. We also had uh, some professional um, dancers who would come and train with us as well. Um, we would also have lots of new artists. Um, I would work with them and they would continue doing some of the performances. And some of them had traveled from Germany to learn the form um, and learn how to teach it from me. And they continue 
teaching it there and also some artists who had um, stayed with us, worked with us, they continued teaching in India and one in Canada. But it is very much to Sushmita's credit that Kala has managed to exist for 25 years and also that it manages to do so much. Thankfully, the value of Kala's work is appreciated and funded by national organisations like the National Lottery Heritage Fund and also Arts Council England. What is different now is that Kala has recently now applied for and has been awarded NPO status, which is National Portfolio Organisation Funding. And so, I'm very pleased to see how Kala is finally getting the recognition and support it deserves.